So let's talk about some of the essentials of off-grid living. The most essential things you need for off-grid living are food, heat, and water, shelter. So let's talk about power. How do you power your off-grid system? I power mine with an off-grid solar system. Now my first video on the cabin that I did, I only had two 330 watt solar panels. I've since added four more 345 watt solar panels. Here they are. And they're the, the black panels. The black panels are a little bit more efficient than the other panels. So I have them rigged now and I changed my system from a 12 volt system to a 24 volt system so that I would get a bit more efficient power use out of what I have. So what I've done is I've rigged these on my racking system here, which I showed you guys before. This racking system has three different settings, winter, spring, fall, summer. So I can get the tilt right. I can get the tilt right no matter what time of year it is to get the most power. But it gets pretty good power now, uh, and we'll go through it here. But if you're doing this yourself, you're basically just connecting these positive and negative leads into a breaker panel box. You don't have to have a breaker panel box here, but I like to have a breaker panel box here. And uh, I have these run into this breaker panel box, and then it goes into this main cable, which is in a conduit that goes to my cabin. So I'm up here at the cabin now, and I'm going to explain what I've done on my, this is a DIY solar panel, solar power project, you could say. Uh, I started with a 12 volt system when I first built the cabin several years ago, and I've upgraded it to a 24 volt system. So like I showed you, I upgraded those panels out there, so I have, you know, more than three times the power now coming in that I had before into a 24 volt system. So, you know, I'm no electrician, uh, but everything I've done, I believe is safe and it's effective and it works and it's been working for years now. So the cable comes in and goes right straight into this charge controller. Now I change the charge controller to this midnight solar charge controller and it gets the maximum efficiency out of my panels. I mean, I can be, you know, five minutes before dark and it's still generating some power with even just ambient light. So this Midnight Solar Classic Edition generates a ton of power. So I have a 24 volt system. So if you look at the intake, I got 28.6 volts coming in, 9.4 volts or amps coming in and uh i mean to the batteries i actually have 72.9 volts coming in but i got 28.6 volts in my batteries and 9.2 amps out output so and it gives you the watts and the kilowatt usage that's going on so from there it goes to this breaker and i got a 150 volt dc breaker on here to count for you know maximum load coming in i got 73 volts coming in so i got a hundred a hundred and fifty volts or a hundred amp breaker to separate that from uh, from the batteries so that goes that power comes in goes to the batteries here positive negative back out again through four six volt 220 amp hour golf cart batteries and it keeps them charged and we can just check the water every once in a while in them 
by popping the lid to make sure that that's up where it belongs to be. And then that goes from there, that powers through a big shunt and back to the inverter. It's a Sun Gold 4000 watt inverter. Uh, seems to do anything I, I need to do. The reason I upgraded it to 24 volts and the inverter to 4000 watts, the biggest reason I did that was so that I could run an air conditioner during the day. And so I actually can run a window unit air conditioner all day long in the heat of summer in my off-grid cabin now with this system. I don't have enough storage in the batteries to run that all night long. It would only run for maybe two or three hours, but I find that if I can get the cabin cooled down during the day enough, uh, which I can because I can crank that that air conditioner all the way down to 68 degrees or whatever then it'll stay cool all night long if I keep the window shut and just run fans and it, and it makes it nice in there so then it goes to this inverter and this inverter goes to an automatic here's an automatic uh, remote I, I guess I should say that's in the cabinet lets me turn it off and on as I need to and then this goes also through another wire to a shore power hookup and this shore power hookup you can hook a generator to it and then you know if you wanted to run your air conditioner all night long then you could just plug the generator in and let it run uh, or you could have <clears throat> which I want to get down the road a little bit when I get some more funds I want to get an automatic start generator that senses a voltage drop which you can do with this inverter this little green in input here it has a two wire input that goes to any automatic start generator and when it senses this this inverter senses a voltage drop to a certain point <coughs> 22 volts I think on a 24 volt system it would send a signal to the generator and automatically start the generator so that way the generator wouldn't have to run all night it would just turn on when it needed to turn on to charge the batteries back up and then when the batteries get charged back up again to the proper point then it would turn itself back off so I think that's kind of like the ultimate system to have with this small system other than really really beefing up my battery and my solar system just to run an air conditioner because it runs everything else just fine so and then of course it goes in from the inverter from here into into the cabin into a regular uh, AC sub panel So here's the remote for the solar system. I can just turn the system off or on uh, from inside. I usually just leave it on. Don't really have any reason to turn it off, but it gives you an option there. If you're gonna be gone for a period of time and you just don't want it on at all, like if it's really cold and you go on vacation or something, you may just turn it off. So there's an option. And then I just hide the panel which is only two circuits in the cabin uh, behind this little old washboard inside. See, so I know having the batteries in an outside compartment uh, is not optimal for cold weather solar systems. So I'm going to uh, add a one inch foam box around the batteries with a vent hole on top and you know constantly charging depending on usage will keep the batteries warm enough i think to function properly i haven't had much problem in the past even on a 12 volt system where my battery's out here uh, i guess if we got in an extreme cold we are in virginia here so if we got in an extreme cold situation you know you might have problems charging the batteries and you might have to 
generate some type of heat source in order to uh, to get them charged. I know they make like a heat film, a DC heat film sheet that you could probably that I could probably put underneath of the batteries over top of some foam connected to the batteries that put off a low volt uh, amount of heat to keep the batteries warmed up in the dead cold of winter. Uh, if I upgrade to lithium, which I probably will upgrade to lithium at some point, then I'll put the batteries inside the cabin. I just really don't have a good comfortable place to put lead acid batteries in my cabin that I would feel comfortable with the off gassing and everything that would go with it. So uh, that's one of my biggest drawbacks on the system, but it seems to be working fine and charging fine, even in the dead of winter at this point in the game. So with my solar components, you know, they come in from the panels out there that we just talked about. I keep them in this box here, which I'm going to insulate better. It's just a pressure treated plywood box framed up. It's got a, a vent on the inside. <clears throat> and I have this little lock panel here, which let's see here. I just keep a lock on this little panel so I don't have to take the whole thing apart. If I were to kick a breaker, I can easily reach my breaker. I can easily check my voltage. I can easily check the inverter to see if everything looks good. The lights are on right. I'm getting the right amount of power and everything's in good shape. So I have this little quick access panel here to get into that. So that's my solar setup. It's a DIY setup. Again, I'm no electrician. I just figured all this stuff out and made it work. Maybe not all of it's done, you know, perfectly how some electrician or something would do it, but it works for me. And a lot of you guys live off grid. Uh, you know, you can maybe use this video to help guide you along and putting your own system in too. Again, thanks for watching and have a blessed day.